Hi, I am Dr. Arsalan Khan and today we are going to discuss the phylum Platyhelminthes. The word Platyhelminthes is derived from Greek language and is composed of two words. The Platy means flat and Helminth means worm. So these are basically the flat worms. These are dorsal ventrally flattened. It means that their dorsal surface are back surface and the ventral surface that is the abdominal surface. Both of these surfaces, the dorsal and ventral surface are flattened. So these are also called as flat worms. The term platyhelminthes was coined by Gaganbar in 1859. The platyhelminthes are bilaterally symmetrical. It, the members of the phylum platyhelminthes can be divided into two equal halves by imaginary line. So these are also called as bilaterally symmetrical. It, the common examples of phylum platyhelminthes are planaria, liver fluke, tapeworm and schistosoma. Planaria is also called as dugesia and it is free living organism. Usually it is aquatic. Liver fluke, it is also called as fasciola hepatica because it resides or live in liver therefore it is called fasciola hepatica and this, is, and this liver fluke or fasciola hepatica is found in the liver of animals and it causes huge economic losses in terms of diseases and mortality rate. The tape form it is also called as tinea solium or tinea saginata and it is found in the muscles. So planaria is free living. Liver fluke or fasciola hepatica is found in liver. The tape form Artinia solium it is found in the muscles and it is most abundant in the muscles of pork. So pork has high incidence of tinea solium or tape worms. The next is schistosoma. It is its complete name is schistosoma bovis and it is found in the blood of cows or animals. So all the three members these are parasites. The liver fluke, tape worm and schistosoma are the parasites while planaria is the free living. The members of phylum platyhelminthes are triploblastic. Their body is made up of three layers ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. These are either unsegmented or if the segments are present then these are superficial segments. So we can say that these are superficially segmented not metamerically segmented. The ectoderm are the outer layer of these animals. In, in case of the parasites this ectoderm is covered by cuticle for protection from the host immune system while in case of free living organisms like planaria this ectoderm is ciliated and cilia and these cilia help in locomotion of the organisms planaria in water. The scolex in order for the attachment of these animals to the host cells to the intestines or muscles or blood vessels of the host these animals have specialized head called scolex. This head is made up of hooks and suckers. This is the head bearing hooks and suckers. Hooks are used for the attachment to the host cells while suckers are used to derive food from the host cells. Digestive system in case of the parasites digestive system is poor because parasites get ready-made food from the host while in case of free living organisms the digestive system is well developed because in case of planaria it is free living organism the digestive system is well developed so that the nutrients may be digested properly in their body to get the nutrition. Circulatory system and respiratory system both are absent and therefore the respiration and circulation occurs in the body through the process of diffusion. It should be kept in mind that the helminth means worm. Helminth means worm and the study of worms is called helminthology. So basically while of the platy helminths belong to the discipline of helminthology. Next is the excretory system. Excretory system in helminths comprises the flame cells. Let's consider this diagram as flame cell. It has a single nucleus, long cilia, the canal and excretory pore. So these are the four components of the flame cell. The long cilia ejects waste from the host cells to the lumen or to the canal and it is excreted out through the excretory pore to the next cell. So, so these flame cells are the excretory organs in case of the helminths. So in case of platy helminths, the flame cells, these are basically excretory organs and act as kidneys. So these are also termed as protonephridia. Flame cells of the platy helminths are also called as protonephridia because these are required for the filtration of the waste from the body of the helminths. This cell is called flame cell because the long cilia, these are flickering like the flame of candles. Therefore, these are termed as the flame cells. Otherwise, there is no technical reason behind this name flame cell. Just it is giving the shape of the flickering flames just like the candle flame. So these cilia are flickering. These flickering cilia are called 
frame cells. Next is the nervous system. In case of platyhelminthes, there is characteristic nervous system comprising an anterior cerebral ganglia or brain. Here brain is called cerebral ganglia and this cerebral ganglia or brain of the worms is present on its anterior side. So this is anterior cerebral ganglia and out of which two nerve cords are arising. So this gives ladder like projection or ladder like nervous system. This is the characteristic feature of the platyhelminthes that they bear ladder like nervous system. Next is locomotion. In case of free living like planaria, movement occurs due to the cilia. Regeneration is also present in planaria while rest of the parasites lack the process of regeneration. Size. The members of this phylum bear variable size. For example, the size of planaria is few millimeter. While the size of tapeworm, it is up to 5 to 6 meters. So the size of platyhelminthes ranges from millimeter up to meters. Next is the reproduction. These are basically hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite means that these are bisexual. Hermaphrodite or bisexual means that one animal or one organism comprises both the male and female reproductive organs in it. So this is called bisexual or hermaphrodite or it is also called as monoecious. Monoecious is the single animal having both male and female reproductive organs. So they have well developed reproductive organs in the form of gonads, ejaculatory ducts and copulatory organs. So in platyhelminthes, their reproductive system is well developed. Each animal has both male and female reproductive organs comprising gonads, the ejaculatory ducts as well as the copulatory organs. The females lay huge number of eggs. Huge number of eggs are laid by female. In case of fertilization, both self-fertilization and cross-fertilization are present in case of platyhelminthes. In case of self-fertilization, the male reproductive organs of worm copulates with its own female reproductive organs by curving it like a hook. While in case of cross fertilization, first the male reproductive organs of one worm copulates with the female reproductive organs of the other worm. Then the second animal's male reproductive organs copulate with the female reproductive organs in a cross like manner. For example, these are the two platyhelminths or worms having both male and female reproductive organs. At first, the male reproductive organs of the first worm combines with the female reproductive organs of the other. And then the male reproductive organs of the second worm combines with the female reproductive organs of the first one so this form cross this fertilization is called cross fertilization in case of these worms self fertilization as well as cross fertilization takes place these are all solitary animals they don't form colonies and live individually these worms are acinomates having no body space or body cavity in them next is the economic classes the members of this phylum cause huge economic classes in terms of diseases to the animals mortality rate or death rate of the animals and zoonosis. Zoonosis means transmission of infections from the animals to human beings. For example, if we consume pork or liver of the infected animals, these parasites, tinea and fasciola will definitely be transmitted to our bodies causing various diseases and health hazards. So these prone our bodies to the health hazards. These animals are soft bodied, their fertilization is internal or union of sperm and what takes place within the body of the animal. Mouth is present but anus is absent and these animals have complex life cycles comprising the larval stages. One or two stages are there in case of platyhelminthes and constitute the complex life cycles of these worms. The health hazards to the human beings include abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, nervous disorders like epilepsy, gastrointestinal disturbances, the blood disorders, it results in huge economic losses as well as, as it is threatful to the health of the human beings. So this was all about the phylum platyhelminthes or the flatworms. Thank you.